My first box of Ikoria is here! All the way from Japan. Yep, this is a Japanese booster box of Ikoria. Um, a little bit earlier than all of my English boxes that will be here in like a couple weeks or something when the set actually releases here in the United States. But I figured I'd try to get a jump on this and open this uh, box of Japanese Ikoria. But tragic, you don't read Japanese. You're not going to understand what these cards say. How do you know? Is my question to you, but you're right. I don't. So, but as you all know, I'm a cheater. I've got my scanner here. I'm going to let the scanner do the hard work and translate these cards. Let's see what we get out of this first box. We're going to be looking for Space Godzillas. We're looking for Triomes. We're looking for Box Toppers. I assume that's what that says. We'll save that for like halfway through. We're looking for Beasts and Behemoths and Nightmares and this and that and the other thing. Fun time. So I'm actually really interested in the uh, alternate art manga style or comic book looking cards. Fun time. So here's some uh, Japanese packaging that I've actually not seen before. It's got like a punch hole. You put it right on the rack of your pegboard and sell packs like that. So I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way and open them like this. Here we go. That looks like a dinosaur. Assume that's what it says. That looks like a forest. I'm going to assume that's what that says. Here's a foil. And it's just a common, so I'm actually not going to really go through it too much. I am going to scan up these rares and see if it will translate it for me. Well, being Colossification. There we go. Let's turn up my sound here. And then I'll go into the, uh, the details here. We're not going to worry so much about the pricing unless it's something big. But we'll at least pull that up and see if we can read it. There's the English version, Colossification. That's what that means. It's a seven drop enchantment. Enchant creature when a Colossification enters the battlefield. Tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus 20, plus 20. A little fling target. Unfortunately, it has to tap it. Hey, it's got to be a little bit of trade off. So, fun times in Ikoria. There's my rare starting off. So, that's how it's going to be. Um, let's do like a quick through. Um, you pretty much check out these cards. Uh, online if you want. There's an otter. I'm going to be looking for alternate arts, but for the most part we're just after the rares for this box. Here we go! Yeah, here we go. Okay, next pack. Let's do it. There's Caesar. I think is who that is. Maybe that's the alternate version. Take a look. Human? On a planes. There we go. We got a full uh, rare and it looks like maybe I got a showcase here. Yeah, there we go. There's a showcase triome. Very nice. So that looks like one of the ultimatums. It's a ruinous ultimatum, and this one's in foil. Um, currently, that says 12 bucks. That's the English version. So we're not really going to get too caught up on the on the pricing, right? Ruinous ultimatum for a bunch. Destroy all non-land permanents your opponent's control. Yeah, very very solid card looking like right there okay and then a triumph I love the alternate arts on these I'm a big fan of comic book style so brighter colors like this is just way up my alley here so I'll definitely be looking for those that is the Ketria Triome the showcase version it would be $23.99 and of course you tap it for green blue or red and there's the battlefield tapped but it has cycling three so there we go Fun times. And we got some kind of cat saber tooth, some kind of saber tooth worm. Love the crazy creatures. Look at that guy. I'm gonna eat that gnat. Very cool. Yep, 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 yep. Gonna ma mainly skip the comments here. So, moving right along. Okay, all right. There must be a trick to these. Japanese packs that I'm not aware of. I'll, I'll get it. I'm gonna get it eventually here. Another human. Tap land. Ah, uh, yeah, it's like the cub, I think, right? So let's see. Offspring's Revenge. Just look real quick. There we go. 
And at the beginning of combat on your turn, exile target red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. It comes back as a 1-1 one, one and it gains haste. Right, so I, I don't know. I don't feel like that's a very strong one. And the pricing kind of reflects that. So here we go. There we go. There's a the shark something. <laughs> I don't know all the names. Pouncing Shore Shark Showcase. I'll be pulling those for sure. Here we go. So, of course, like foreign cards typically will trend lower price-wise than uh, English cards, but mainly just wanting to check this out here. So, bear with me. Dude, this, uh, yeah, this pack is going to confound me. All right, so you just got to, like, peel it open. Get over there. Token, tap land. What even is that? Quartzwood Crasher. I might not read all of these. It's a 6-6 six, six Dinosaur Beast. There you go. You can read that if you'd like. All right, moving on. Anything standing out? I kind of like this Mana Dork here. Uh, Vulpakeet, I think, is what that is. Or is that a different one? I don't know. Who can be expected to know everything, especially when you can't even read it? All right. Oh, got a foil. That's an uncommon. Oh, there's a shark. That was a sonorous howl bonder. We're going to put that over here. And this is a... It's not the Sharknado. The Voracious Great Shark. Flash, 5-4 five, for 5 when it enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell. Buck 50 or so. Okay. There's a uh, alternate showcase art for Necropanther. Very cool. Just love it. I'm a big comic book nerd. I don't know if some of you might know that from some of my previous videos. So just this like kind of line art, comic book art, really gets my goat, if you will. And my squirrel, and my nightmare, and my dinosaur, and my human, and my fox. Moving along. Bring me the cards. Here we go. Another human. One of those. There we go. A Garuda. A master of brokenness right there. So let's scan that up. Yeah, 10 bucks, just the regular version. And it says some stuff on it, right? It's got companion. That's apparently starting to be an issue. Uh, your cards have to be converted mana cost uh, even, right? So it enters the battlefield. Each player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards on the battlefield under your control. And that one of those cards could happen to be a spark double, which is a lot of fun for shenanigans there. So that's a good one. Um, uncommon. So, oh, there we go. We've got a alternate, like a crab or a turtle or a hybrid crab turtle thing. Let's see. Archipelagor. Just curious what kind of creature type that was. It's a Leviathan. Sure. I'll be pulling that one right there. And some kind of trap and some commons. And we'll skip by those. All right, next up. Oh, gosh. I'm not too used to these packs. Hey, that's a cool-looking token. 8-8, eight, eight, like a Kraken or something, or Leviathan. Let's see. Can it know? No, it doesn't know this token, so move on. There's a turtle. Yadaro, Wandering Monster. This is not the extended art version, though, so let's see if it's just the regular one. $5.99 for a dinosaur turtle and a bunch of text, so feel free to read that right there. Anything else? Um, these guys are apparently showing up in some decks right now. There you go. So, next pack. Not so. Sh I'm not sure how many. Uh, I don't think you get. Do you get Godzillas in the regular pack? Here's the punch out uh, tokens that will give your creatures. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna guess. Mm, there's a lifelink token. Is that a hexproof? Is this a reach? A one one. A vigilance. And is this a men menace or a trample? 
Oh, okay, they're they're on the back, so that's. I, I don't know which one's which. Flying, another flying. What's this? Just a, a press. I'm not sure. All right, well, when they get the English version, maybe things will become more clear. For now, got that. It's a four five for three. Hunted nightmare, and let's take a look. Menace when Hunted Nightmare enters the battlefield. Target opponent puts a Death Touch counter on a creature they control. Right, right. So the, the Hunted Creature series always have some kind of like reduced casting cost, but then it's like a some kind of benefit for your opponent. Oh, this this uh, no, nothing to be said about that Pangolin, right? Maybe there's a lot to be said about that. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about these packs here. That's cool. Very nice looking token there. And again, let's see if it'll recognize it. It's a little early in the game for the scanner to know all the tokens, apparently. We got a foil sneaky snake there. It's a Zagoth Mamba, which is a nightmare snake. Yeah, it looks like a quite a nightmare. There he is. And the foil version is probably not a whole lot. This is another ultimatum. Eerie Ultimatum, 350 or so. Return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. Costs seven. The ultimatums cost a lot, but any more, I mean, there's ways to get up to that level of mana. This is a mutate card, but I'm not going to get into that. We're going to move on. Here we go. Next pack of Ikoria. Oh, uh, this guy. Yeah, it's a companion fox. I forget his name already. Zerda, the Dawn Waker. Got companion loaded up. There we go. Each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. So good for artifacts, I guess. And could be anything, really. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cause two less to activate. But you can't go less than one, right? So this doesn't even affect itself. All right, so there you go, Zerda, the Dawn Waker. Any showcase cards in here? There we go, there's one. So this one is a Cloud Piercer showcase. Three bucks for a common. I don't know, I literally love the art on this. Like, I hope they continue to do showcases with uh, this kind of art. Personally, yeah. Next up, cool token, cool planes, and let's see what that says. Death's Oasis. For three, it's an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard, then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your graveyard to your hand. You can sacrifice the gain life equal to the greatest converted mana cost. Among creatures you control, kind of a pseudo cascade, I guess. There we go. No showcase. All right. Halfway through the box. Might have to pick up the pace a little bit. There's a foil planes. This one is something with Narset on it. Whirlwind of Thought. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. Hey, that's got possibilities, right? And... No showcase, all right. This is the Struggling with Pax show, featuring Tragic. Ooh, there we go. There's uh, um, Vivian, right? Yeah. It's, it's tough when you can't actually read it. Yeah, Vivian Monsters Advocate would be $14.99 in English. It's for five. She comes in with three. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Very cool. And plus, wanted to make a green 3-3 three, three beast creature token. And it gets a Vigilance or a Reach or a Trample. 
Or you could minus two her for when you cast your next creature spell this turn. Search your library for a creature card with less or convert to mana cost. Put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. Solid. Very solid. There we go. Uh, let's put in the good pile. I don't know which one's the good pile. It's that one. And nothing much more than that. Okay. Okay, these packs here. Okay, 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 I got it. I got it. Got a Sharknado token. And that looks like a Triumph. Very cool. A Rogren Triumph. So it's uh, blue, red, or white. There we go. And nothing else. Okay. I'm starting to get the hang of these. Foil uh, Forest. Hey, we got a showcase and um, the Snapdax mythos of Snapdax, right? So, what does that do? Each player chooses an artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker from among the non land permanents they control, then sacrifices the rest. If you paid black and red with this, you choose the permanents for each player instead. Okay. You're committed to three colors if you're going to play that card, pretty much. Okay. And this is the Weaver, I think. Some kind of. Nope, Recluse, but it is a spider, right? Showcase. There it is. Very cool art. Again, I love these alternate showcase. Definitely much better than I liked the um, Theros Beyond Death constellations. Those were cool. These are more cool. Oh, there we go. We got a mythic uh, Brontos or something like that. Brockos, Apex of Forever. There we go. Uh, let's see. It's got Mutate for a bunch. And when you trample, you may cast Brockos from your graveyard using its Mutate ability. It's a 6-6 six, six for 5. Nightmare Beast Elemental. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And quickly for any showcases, no. Ah, I'm gonna run. Oops. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. This guy, and that. Look at that art. That's cool. So, what does he do? He does something that's kind of restrictive in the older formats. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Yeah, yeah. So. That, that shuts down um, like Euro, doesn't it? There you go. And this one was Lord Dracus Showcase. Very cool. Any other showcase? I don't know if you could get more than one showcase in one pack, but I suppose it's possible. Struggling with those packs. Another ultimatum. Genesis ultimatum. What does it just do in a, in a gist? Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield. And the rest into your hand. And then you exile this. That's a one-time use. But pretty powerful effect right there. Anything special? Yay, hey, there was. What's this guy? Very cool. Oop, oops, see it? A cavern whisperer. There we go, just a common. Uh, another companion, I think, right? Gigantha, the Wellspring. Companion, no card in your starting deck it has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost. Right, so this is a five color enabler, right? You pay five colors. This mana can't be spent to pay generic mana cost. So it's only for casting other stuff. So five color commander deck is going to want that. This guy um, gives your legendary humans indestructible, I believe. So that's pretty solid. There's a brush wag, which is actually kind of better than he looks at first glance, I think. There we go. There's a punch out. 
glad these they don't have punch outs in every single pack. Uh, I don't think you really need them. Foil monkey squirrel lizard or something. And another companion. This is the guy that gives vigilance, I think. Kahira. Do to do, do. Takes a little time. Each other creature you control that's a cat or those things gets one one has vigilance. Oh, yeah. This is each each creature's got to be a cat elemental nightmare dinosaur beast in your deck. Well, if you got no creatures, then he's just a free creature, right? So they're always already finding ways to abuse this mechanic. Magic players, you just can't just let them go to town with a new box of toys, right? They'll break them. Cub token, another ultimatum. Inspired ultimatum. I need to move something here. Like, bear with me. Uh, we'll try it like that. Uh, inspired ultimatum. Target player gains five life, and then it deals five damage to any target. Then you draw five cards. Okay. All right. And a parrot. Porky Parrot, I think, right? Yeah. Alternate, alternate, alternate. It's nothing. Okay. Next pack. Mutate card. What is this? A gem razor. Mutate for that. It's got reach and trample. Whenever this creature mutates, destroy target artifact or enchantment. And opponent controls for four interesting got some possibilities and what else what else what else no showcase okay uh it's an enchantment titan's nest At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. Exile a card from your graveyard to add colorless. Spend this mana only to cast a colored spell without X in its mana cost. Meh. That's my official feeling of that card. Meh. There we go. Okay. I have to move this so they don't fall all over everything. Here. Big stack of cards going now. Okay. Foil Triumph. That's solid right there. It is the Savai Triumph. Currently, the foil English version would be $29.99. And it is the red, white, and black one. There you go. And then that's another Mythos of a Luna. And this one, what does it do? Create a token that's a copy of Target Permanent. If you paid red and green with it, then instead create a token that's a copy of that permanent, except the token has when this permanent enters the battlefield. If it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Cool. There we go. No showcase. We're busting through this box here. I know it's taking kind of a while, but it's a whole box. And it's in a different language. And I'm slow. Alright, we got a full we got a mythic. Oh, we got the, the moth, I think. Yeah, there it is. Luminous brood moth, is that what this is called? It is in fact called Luminous Brood Moth. Well, we better read that. Uh, flying whenever a creature you control without flying dies return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter on it moth aristocrats that's what I call it very cool very cool indeed let's see squirrel no showcase and luminous brood moth currently the English is 2448 um, getting some good hits here Oops, what is this? We got an artifact. Colorless creature, at least. Crystalline giant. 
At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose a kind of counter at random that Crystalline Giant doesn't have on it. From among flying, first strike, death touch, hexproof, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, vigilance, and one one. Put a counter of that kind on Crystalline Giant. Um, hmm. Yeah. I think it's pretty solid. Oh, there we go. Cool. Look at this art. Look at that guy. Awesome. What is that? Insatiable Hemophage Showcase version. There we go. It's got Menace and Death Touch. Very cool. Let's see here. And again... Oh, there was there were two showcases in this pack. So that, that's confirmed. You can get that. Dreamtail Heron Showcase. Again, comic book fan. Speaks to me. Love it. Ooh, a box topper. So this, I believe, um, is a Japanese exclusive. Wow, look at that. We got a box topper, a showcase Narset as well. That's a hot pack right there. So I believe this is uh, exclusive to the Japanese market. And um, they forgot to put these into the collector's packs, apparently. And there's some kind of shenanigans about how people are going to have to get them and stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Don't take my word for it. Um... Mothra's Giant Cocoon is what that is. The foil version. It, it doesn't really have a price on it. Um, it's just a common. In fact, here, let's read what it even says. It, it's just the Japanese version. So there is no English version, I think, at this point. So I don't even know what it does. It's a 0-2 for 1, and it does some stuff. And it's foil. So currently, this is kind of a rarity, I think. So I'll have to check the open market and see if anyone's even interested in them. But here's Narset. Very cool. And uh, they gave her the comic book treatment. I love it. I'm all about it. And it cannot even be scanned. I don't know. So let's see. I don't even know what the full name of this is. But if you type in Narset of the Ancient Way. So here's the regular version of Narset. Um, yeah, it's the same card, same casting cost. You can read all that. Um, she would be fourteen forty nine, and the regular. Okay, here it is. The borderless version. It's currently sitting at twenty three ninety nine. Whoops. Hold on. What happened? Okay, I had to fix my phone. So here's Narset, the borderless version, sitting at twenty three ninety nine, or the English version, of course. Grain of salt and all that stuff. Very cool. Very good pack right there. Any other? Special surprises in that pack? No. Okay, moving on. Okay, come on. Yeah, like I said, I don't know if I like this pack. So there we go, there's a Godzilla. Um, Which Godzilla is it? Oh, we got a bat too, there we go. So... Godzilla Primeval Champion, which was AKA Titanic, Ruth Rick, something like that. Can't even read it, it's a little fuzzy. 11 11 for 9. Trample, it's got cycling. You cycle Titanoth Rex. Put a trample counter on target creature you control. There you go. So, my first real Godzilla card. And then we got a bat, Dirge Bat. Mutate, flash, flying, whenever this creature mutates, destroy target creature A or planeswalker and opponent controls. So it's a mutating chupacabra. There we go. What else? Anything? Got a brush wag. And nothing else. Okay. Moving right along. Sharknado, there's a foil Narset's reversal, I think it is. Here's an octopus. Sea Dasher octopus, right? Yeah, 895. Mutate, flash, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Very cool. Any showcase items here? Nope. Nope. 
Yeah, this whole video is me struggling with these packs, probably, right? Whoa, look at that art. Very cool. So we got a showcase rare. Uh, Phoenix, I think. Yeah, Evercool Phoenix showcase version. Come on. There we go. Mutate for four flying. Whenever this creature mutates, create a red artifact token named Feather. With pay one to sacrifice Feather, return target Phoenix card from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. Oh, okay, so it, it's not just for this Phoenix, you could reanimate your other Phoenixes with it. Okay, cool. Very cool. And that's the only showcase. Getting down to the end of this. Punch out, got a full common. That's a Slither Wisp and we got a showcase something there. Slither Wisp, uh, it's Flash. Whenever you cast another spell that has Flash, you draw a card and each opponent loses one life. And then this guy is an Auspicious Starix. Any other showcases? Yeah, there is one, there we go. We got a common Migratory Great Horn. Wow, that's how to do it. Oops, ooh, we got a foil common showcase. Being it's one of the ones we found before and as a foil, I'm sure it's a little bit more. Uh, there's another uh, enchantment, the Song of Creation. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards. At the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Gotcha, so it had to have a drawback with those other two. Pretty powerful effects. Got a showcase chittering harvester. That's it. Okay. Look at this guy. I think it must be a companion. Karuga the macro sage. Companion, your starting deck contains only cards with converted mana cost 3 or greater and land cards. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card for each other permanent you control with a converted mana cost 3 or greater. So your big creatures deck would like that, sure. Okay. Three packs left. And then we'll open that box hopper, which is like buried now at this point. Oh gosh, come on. Oh, that's a good one. So we got a uh, showcase Mothra. Mothra, super, supersonic queen, which is luminous brood, brood moth. And it recognizes it. 55 bucks for that card currently in the English version. That's a keeper right there. Um, another ultimatum. Ruinous ultimatum. It does that. And destroy all non land permanents your opponent's control. Yeah, that's pretty solid. There we go. Another mythic, and I think that's a pretty good one. Kinnon Vonder Prodigy. About 20 bucks for that. Whenever you tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced, and you pay six. Look at the, I'm sorry, seven. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Solid, very solid card right there. Good commander, right? And do we? Yep. Here's a, a showcase. Is that the Vulpakeet? Both Keat showcase. There we go. Okay. Last pack. Get rid of this box. And some kind of flying thing. Yorion, Sky Nomad. Got companion. Your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. Wow. 
Flying, when your orient enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permits you own and control. Return those cards to the battlefield at the beginning of your next end step. Okay, there you go. Any other showcases? That was it. All right, let's open this box topper. Where is it even at? Look at all this. Yep, there it is. What do we get? Give me a give me a Godzilla. Hey, it's like the same card I already got. Hey, I want my money back. I already got one of these. So there we go, another moth egg, and it's indetermined of what that actually is or how much it's worth. So there we go. That was my box topper. There you have it, my first box of Ikoria, all the way from Japan. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to check out all my other videos. Like and subscribe. I'm Tragic MTG. Catch you later.